Testing, testing, testing. One, two, testing, testing. You give me one. Uh, sorry, I really just had to burp. That's nice. That's right. Welcome to Two Guys, One Podcast. I'm one guy. I'm the other. And this is the podcast. We have a show. We have a show that has a place on the, it's got a website. This RSS feed, which I know you have no idea what that means, but we have one now. And you can even subscribe to us in iTunes. Uh, you can't search for us in iTunes yet, but soon, next couple of days, you'll be able to do that. It's really awesome, man. I'm excited. I don't know what constitutes a show like, ah, you've done one and now you're attempting another. Good show. Uh, you, one, of, one of our professors, right? The rule was that you weren't, you weren't a thing until you've done it professionally twice. Yeah, but I'm not getting paid. Inexperience. <laughs> Inexperience, sir. We are reaping the benefits uh, tenfold. And it, it's a good time, man. So now that we've had one episode, though, not that we haven't made mistakes in the past, but we haven't made any in a public forum uh, that we're going to own up to. Uh, here's a new segment. We've made a huge mistake. they <laughs> admitted to a mistake. <laughs> I've made a huge mistake. I've made a huge mistake. Last week, we discussed mythical creatures and in particular – the phoenix was my yeah. choice for a mythical creature that I could bring into existence. If I could uh, bring one mythical creature into into existence, the phoenix was my choice for several reasons. And I said one of the problems with with these other creatures is that you're you're only bringing one into existence, and that stinks for them, right? If you bring one dragon, then that dragon at best can do some damage, and then eventually it's going to die off, and that'll be the end of the dragons again. If you bring a yeti, that's a lonely fucking yeti, right? Well, a phoenix. Only one of them. There's one of them, and then it, it dies, and it burns up in, in the flames, and then is reborn from the ashes. And I, That's I the disagreed way that the with that. Works. We also discussed what is the plural of phoenix. First off, the plural of phoenix is phoenixes. Really? That's, it is. Not uh, phoenix. I guess, I guess either way, it's still a difficult word to say. It is a difficult word and, to and say. And here's the thing. If there was only one, then there's no need for a plural. And that, my friends – is the beauty of it. The phoenix. It has a 500 to 1,000 year life cycle, near the end of which it builds itself a nest of twigs that then ignites. Both nest and bird burn fiercely and are reduced to ashes from which a new young phoenix or phoenix egg arises. So he, here's the deal. He first builds a nest yes, and then sets it on fire. A couple of questions. How does this bird set it on fire? Like if it's just spontaneous combusting itself – why take the time to build a nest? Uh, for it, my understanding is for two reasons. First of all, uh, just as if you were going to build a, a pyre for a witch, you could just you could just burn a person if if you wanted to, uh, but you want the fire to be hotter. You want to build a you can't a, just burn a person. It's a mythical altar. If you sprayed them with a flamethrower. I Ooh, couldn't, yeah, I couldn't I hit they, somebody with a flamethrower and light them on fire. Yeah, I could without right, any think, kindling right, but I think at a all. a flamethrower has it has like uh, the fuel of it's coming out and sticking to you, right? On no, some of them? that would be a um, like a napalm gun. Yeah, that'd be a nap now a napalm gun, my friend. <laughs> now you're on to some serious, serious destruction there. No napalm gun. No, th I don't think that exists as a thing. We, we're going to have to. That'll be on next week's. We made a huge mistake. No, the phoenix is in it's, it's spontaneous combustion. Okay, the phoenix, so there's more at than a certain one. point as it dies, it flames up. There is no, there is, there is not more than one. A mythological bird said to be. This is from the. This is from Wiktionary. Phoenix. Uh, ah, yeah, here it is. Phoenix. The plural can be just phoenix, like deer, or phoenix is f uh, p h o e n i x e s. Mythological bird said to be the only one of its kind which lives for 500 years to 1,000 years and then dies by turning to ashes on a pyre of its own making ignited by the sun. Uh, it then arises anew from the ashes. But can you really trust an article that starts out with, here's the plural form, but that's the only one? Like, why have the plural form? Like, there's. I show you facts. <laughs> that's not facts. It's on the internet. That is no uh, anything I show you on the internet is fact now. Something else that we made a huge mistake about last week, or uh, again, maybe I should make this segment, the other guy made a huge mistake. Uh, you were wrong on Phoenixes. I was not wrong on Phoenix. You were wrong on Phoenix. And There's you were also form. wrong, my friend, about McDonald's and the hot ladies. Playboy.com, this, uh, an article from CNN, uh, Money, um, and uh, we've got links for all of these. We've made huge mistakes on our Tumblr page, 
uh, two guys, one pod.tumblr.com. And, uh, yeah, you can go there and check these out weekly. We'll post them a couple of days after the new podcast goes up. Playboy.com debuted the Women of McDonald's feature Tuesday. Uh, this is from uh, November 16, 2004, uh, in which six employees from the Fast Food King were chosen to pose nude for the online pictorial. The spread is the culmination of a nationwide search that Playboy.com launched in September for the sexiest burger babes willing to shed a lot more than just their aprons. Christy Creighton, uh, one of the McDonald's employees featured in the pictorial, uh, is here in a photo holding uh, <laughs> uh, holding fries and a shake. Uh, and she says uh, – she calls it – an exciting experience. Uh, the online publication of adult men's I mean, magazines. it would be an exciting experience for somebody who works at McDonald's. Yeah, probably so. I, You know, I bet it's a lot of fun to do, to do a pictorial in Playboy. You've got to imagine uh, – let's be honest. We joke about people reading it for the articles. But as things with nudie pictures go, Playboy's about as classy as they come. Yeah, I guess. But here's the deal. I, I'm not wrong and that they shouldn't have done a, a women at McDonald's. And then I was wrong because I underestimated how low a smut mag will go. I've heard this a quote Who from knew? this is another quote from the beautiful the beautiful and I'm going to show you this photo. You're going to eat your words here. Christy Creighton, she was a floor supervisor at a Louisville, Kentucky, a McDonald's. I've heard about Playboy.com doing women of pictorials. So when I heard they were interested in employees from McDonald's, I knew I wanted to submit my photos. The experience of posing for Playboy has been exciting. So 2004, this is old news. I, I can't believe that I missed this, though, seriously. I mean, Why, I, do you have a subscription to Playboy? Well, no, I don't have a subscription to Playboy. Do you have a subscription to McDonald's Let's go weekly? back to – two. well, I mean, I guess in 2000 – I was newly I was newlywed in 2004. Maybe that's why I, I didn't notice. I was busy. That's probably what it was. Doing work? <laughs> yeah, I was busy doing work. Just doing work? <laughs> One of the things that you and I have in common is an interest in sports and – and not everybody that listens to this is uh, going to be into sports, but uh, but we are. Although, why don't we come at it from a different angle? We're not going to talk about you know who scored what last night, but sometimes interesting stories will come across, and and we can discuss them. Chris Birdman Anderson, that kid's in some trouble. Yeah, that's uh... first of all when you take on the moniker Birdman. I think you've owned up to. I'm a I'm, weird cat. I'm going to live a life that is different than other men. I just, I just think the details of the thing are fascinating. Well, first off, let's recap. Birdman Anderson is currently under investigation. He's been charged with uh, child pornography is what it amounts to. A technical term has sexual malfeasance um, with a minor over the Internet or something like that. But it, it sounds to me like they have – Supposedly, he they found him with photos or videos or something like that. Right, but this is—I mean, this isn't just some scrub sitting on the bench. Like, no, this, like, this guy actually—he gets minutes. Yeah, I mean, he was an important uh, piece for the Denver Nuggets franchise and a, a former New Orleans Hornet. His attorney comes out and says that he believes the allegations that led to a search of the Denver Nuggets players' home this week involve a spurned female fan. A female fan, this is a quote from uh, the attorney's statement, a female fan in 2010 mailed email, uh, uh, no, mailed Mr. Anderson multiple letters and included several photos in which she was scantily clad. That story right there is already a lie. Because she mailed them? Yeah, who mails something in 2000? And especially photos like... I wondered about that too in 2010. I yeah. mean, I know that's... Okay, so it's two years ago and the world is changing very fast. But two years ago, were we still mailing dirty photos? I don't think so. I think you just... You email them, right? Maybe you didn't text them two years ago, but you... Yeah, but I you don't. email or text and then... Yeah. So he goes on. Chris and this woman communicated with... There's this mistake right there. Bill Clinton made it years ago. He was going to get away with everything until he said, I did not have sex with that woman, Miss Lewinsky. My mother, my mother told me. I was in high school at the time and my mother says, He's, he screwed up right there. He called her that woman and she's going to come out and, and put everything she has on the table. And sure enough, she did, like almost immediately, right? All of a sudden, she had some new evidence that she came forward. The lawyer calls her this woman. She says, uh, he says, Chris and this woman communicated with each other. And in 2011, this woman, again, he calls, why would you, why would so rude? I, I mean, I'm sure it's just about anonymity, I guess, huh? Yeah, like you. I don't you don't want to call her out by name in the in the thing. Who represented her? This woman who represented herself as 21 years of age flew to Colorado showing her required identification. So a groupie mails you dirty photos. You are a famous NBA player. Can I duck? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you can duck a lot. <laughs> That's what you want to know. Can I? Yeah, do? I mean, if I'm a if I'm a perimeter shooter, I don't want to be in the NBA. No, Anderson can dunk. Anderson yeah. can dunk, right? Uh, yeah, he's got those. He's got like a 12 foot wingspan. I mean, yeah. he is the bird. He's man. the bird man. Good call. I don't. Does he do that? I don't know. No. Okay, so you're you're a famous NBA player, 
and single, by the way. You're not married to Mrs. Other Guy. Okay. Mrs. Other Guy doesn't exist. In it. You're not the other guy. You're Birdman Anderson, in fact. <laughs> you get mail with with dirty pictures or racy photos of this chick. You continue to correspond. First off, you probably don't correspond with her, right? <laughs> like you don't you don't you don't up the level of communication. No, I, you might look at the photos, right? Because you're, you're I, I think my first her. thought: if somebody, if I got a letter in the mail from a stranger, first, if I got a letter in the mail from from anybody, it'd be weird. But if I get a letter in the mail from a stranger that has risque photos of them, I mean, my first thought actually is. Wow, a prisoner is is mailing me like it's the you know prisoner pen pal thing. Yes, maybe it didn't go to the correct address. Right. <laughs> okay, assume you're famous, and so obviously people are uh, people who you don't have any connection to feel as if they have a connection to you. That's what happens when when people get famous. I mean, you know, we we think we know Tom Hanks and and Tom Cruise. We don't know what those people are like, but I mean, we you feel like you have a connection to them through the movies and interviews and et cetera, et cetera. So this this lady. Maybe in prison, she but she felt like she knew Chris Anderson and could reach out and share these photos with him and that he would appreciate them. Well, I don't think she was wrong. You wouldn't reach back. He did. Yeah. Well, I don't think I don't think her assumption was wrong. I mean, I think any guy. Who well, gets, obviously, it wasn't any he guy was, who gets nude photos in the mail of anybody. I mean, they're not going to be mad about it. Yeah, that's probably well. No, because even if yeah, it's a bad photo, even if it's it, a bad photo, I just wouldn't look at them again. No, I mean, then you use it for something else. Like if it's a horrible photo, like. You give your friend a birthday card and they open it up and it's that photo taped inside. Ding, ding. Dark side points for you. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. So last week I was the bad guy. Now you're the bad guy. I hate chimpanzees. You uh, want to uh, blackmail ugly people. I like it. They communicated more, which is a bad idea. We both agree that's a bad idea. She flew herself to Denver. Well, here's, here's, I, here's I, I don't agree with the story either because I assume that the reason she mailed – the letter is because she has no other way right. to get So that means he must have sent That means her. he would have to have written a letter, and I don't think Chris Birdman can write a letter. You think this attorney was secretly corresponding for him? No, I just think the attorney's making stuff up. So she gets there to Denver, supposedly, in this account, allegedly, and uh, showed her required identification. That's right. Chris Birdman Anderson, ladies and gentlemen, will card you before he beds you. I know. I think that man at the airport. But why would it matter if you're 21 or – I mean, can 16-year-olds not fly by themselves? I mean, my – Yes, but 16-year-olds can't screw NBA players. You're saying – He carded her. Birdman Anderson, the lawyer is saying, carded her before he bedded her. Oh, that's – see, it's just getting more and more ridiculous. I agree. I am Now, on the flip side, if you're the kind of guy that's famous and that likes to bed strange women, I would be a guy that would be looking for identification, but I doubt – I don't think he reached for identification. I think a smart person would. Kobe, if Kobe bed strange women, I bet he, I bet he cards. He them. has bedded strange women, <laughs> and I bet he cards them. That's what I'm saying. I bet you, you, you might bust me for infidelity. You're not going to bust me for screwing minors. I bet that's his. You think he learned that from R. Kelly? Uh, <laughs> like I'm not going to make that mistake. <laughs> I'll pee on a woman, but I won't pee on a minor. <laughs> <laughs> we should loop that mega dance track. Um, Okay, so the statement continues. After leaving Colorado, she became upset at his lack of interest. <laughs> In 2012, she threatened to retaliate if he did not provide financial remuneration. Someone claiming to be the woman's mother wrote in an email, I want him to pay for everything on her Amazon wish list, 5K for her betting stuff, and her Victoria's Secret wish list, according to the statement. What Victoria's? So she's a minor. There's 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 nothing so far that says she's a minor. They just made a point. They, I think the lawyer was trying to say Chris Anderson is a careful man about the things that he does sexually. <laughs> <laughs> he would never he would never do child pornography, and if he did, he wouldn't leave it on his hard drive. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I think that's how it comes off because nobody has said that this girl was a minor. Nobody has said this girl exists. The lawyer has. The lawyer has, but what adult is perhaps have, invented this entire thing? What, what adult's going to have their mom write a letter? You know, I love the idea that the mom apparently is pimping her out for for sheets and lingerie. That's oh, was what that the, the mother's yes. wish list, not her, not the daughter's. No, 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 wish no the, list. the daughter, the daughter's wish list. The 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 mom is the mom supposedly emailed Anderson or or the lawyer and said. We're going to go public and we're going to get back at you. We're going to get back at you for all these things unless you buy her Amazon wish list, you buy her $5,000 worth of betting stuff, and and you buy her 
her uh, Victoria's Secret wish list. Chicks, chick wants to go shopping. That's just weird, man. You'll get no argument from me. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. So to me, here's – this is one of those situations where the plot thickens. I was – not super surprised if you had told me if you told me two weeks ago an NBA athlete is about to be charged with child pornography. Which athlete is it? I might not have guessed Chris Chris Anderson first. He probably would have been in the top five. I don't, who would you who would you have guessed? First person you had what? You know what's strange? I don't think of a single African American athlete. For some reason, child pornography does not strike me as a as a as an African American phenomenon. I think white guy. So you I think, think Dirk? <laughs> I mean, he's German. He is German. He is German. We already know he's probably into weird sex stuff. He had the nonsense last year with like the woman with the, he was married. He was going to marry a woman with a with the wrong name, right? She was she was a fake person. She had lied about her entire history or something, and it all like she got arrested for extortion and all sorts of stuff. And 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 he didn't know anything about it until the cops came to get her. I'm saying that's a dude that that lives in weird circles anyway. Yeah, I'm like, not saying he's a child think. pornographer. I mean, he's, a, he's a tall, odd looking person. From Germany, we were talking about 15 years ago. I would have, I would have bet money. Detlef Schrempf was either a cannibal or a child pornographer. Detlef Schrempf was an evil-looking man, Nazi motherfucker. Well, I think the NBA is just full of odd-looking people. Like they're not, like you can't be a normal-looking person and play basketball in the NBA. I don't think that's true. I think you can't be a normal-looking white man. White men don't carry the size that well. You can't be six foot plus, two hundred plus pounds, built like they are, be white. And look normal. You are malformed in some way when you are when you're that. Look at Chris Kamen. Look at odd guy. Look at Detlef Shrimp. Look at Dirk. Dirk, who I mean, it's not like Dirk is an ugly individual. He stands apart from other men, and not just because of how tall would he is. You, if, would if you, you kick Dirk out of bed for eating crackers? I Dirk would never be in my bed. Well, then there you go. He's he's an unattractive person. Then I mean, if you're a chick, yes. Not, not if you're a dude, but if you're a chick. Oh yeah, no, yeah. Even if I was a chick, like Dirk he, is not he's a guy who has would... to be famous. Yeah, and rich, <laughs> famous and rich, famous would not get it done for him alone. The plot thickens on Chris Anderson. Maybe a child pornographer. Maybe just a bad decision. A bad decision maker. <laughs> maybe just a bad decision maker. That's possible too. You know what didn't occur to me until just this morning? Actually, I posted the, I posted our first episode. I mean, several people had listened to it, but I, we hadn't shared it in any public fashion. It is now on the internet. I did that, and I don't know why, but it all of a sudden occurred to me. I we came out the same week as Avengers, and and we're calling you the other guy. I, you, you're a you're the Hulk, sir. You're a superhero. I'm just because I'm big. Well, it doesn't have anything to do. I didn't. I, we didn't do it on purpose. I didn't even think about the the connection with the Hulk. But he references. Spoiler, spoiler, spoiler for the Avengers. If you're one of the five people who hasn't seen the Avengers yet. He uh, Mark Ruffalo references the Hulk as the other guy. He doesn't. He only calls him the Hulk once, I think. Right? Ooh, what if I really am? Like, what if I'm not a real person? You're just so messed up in the head that the one you only eats four or five things, and that's it. Like that person is so messed up, he has to be his own ego and personality in your head. And then there's me, which is so different from that one. And so incompatible that you literally have to separate the two in your head. You're my Tyler Durden? Yeah, I could be your Tyler Durden. Spoiler for a 15-year-old <laughs> Fight Club movie. I think it's past the statute's of limitation on that. I, there's got to be one. I think the Avengers did better than – what is it? Dark Shadow? Shadow right over – what's the Dark Shadow? Shadows. Yeah, I think it did more than uh, Dark Shadows did in its first weekend. It did $103.2 million. The Avengers did. The Avengers did 103.2 million this past weekend. It's I weekend. guessed. I guessed that it would get to 100 yeah. 100 million. I got to tell you, man, that's that's crazy. That means if it made 100 million here, it's going to cross a billion this weekend. It's going to cross a billion in well, its second it, week. Yeah, it's already crossed a billion. Yeah, it crossed a billion mark in ten days. Oh my god, that's amazing. So in ten days, it made what an what an amazing. First off, okay. When was the deal with Disney done and Marvel? Was that two years ago or three years ago? Uh, I think three years ago. Okay. At the time, they paid $4 million for Marvel Comics Enterprises, whatever the official name of the whole company was. They bought it lock, stock, and barrel, all of the characters, et cetera, et cetera, $4 billion. And Wall Street and the business world 
just guffawed. They said, "What a oh, it shows how off the rocker the Mouse House has become." No, my friends, they bought content. the The world's biggest media company bought content for their myriad channels of distribution. That's all they. That's all they do is put out content, and they bought twelve hundred characters or whatever it is that the Marvel Universe includes. What a brilliant payoff! First two weeks, and they've already got a quarter of their money back. That's before any of the merchandising. That's before any of the DVD and Blu-ray and home video. The cartoon spinoffs, the raise in awareness that this brings to the comic book world. Good God, man. Disney's going to make all their money on this one project. They're going to make all their money from Marvel back on this one project. Completely wipes the slate of John Carter, right? right? I mean, John Carter was a gigantic. It made a lot of money, but it cost a tremendous amount of money, and it and it didn't have the resonance with audiences that that Disney anticipated it was going to. It also didn't bring them boys. They, like the Catholic Church, are looking for little boys, and and they have not found them until now. They've you got that great new Avengers cartoon that's on Disney XD. You've got the Ultimate Spider Man cartoon, which I'm really into now, watching with with my sons. And now you've got an Avengers franchise, for God's sake, on the big screen, man. Wow. What a world we live in. Do you have nothing to say to that? Nothing. All right. I think a lot of people's favorite segment, definitely my favorite segment from our first podcast, is what would the other guy eat? What's he eating in there? Not. I can't not possibly eat one more bag of it's chocolatey goodness. It's like eating a spoonful of Drano. Sure, it'll clean you out, but it'll leave you hollow inside. Or what is the other guy eating? I don't think it's an interesting... I think other people eat these things. Do they? Well, they sell them. I mean, there's got to be a market for them, so somebody's got to be eating them. Uh, this one, I've... Oh, that's disgusting. I actually never go looking, like, for weird stuff. It's just, you know, if something catches my eye, I don't think I'm going to be able to do this. Oh, uh uh-oh. Is it leaky? Yeah. Oh. See? I told you. I think it was supposed to be refrigerated. No, I don't think it was at all. (laughs) It wasn't refrigerated when I bought it. What is is the name of this item? (laughs) It is. uh, I'm not – this isn't a joke. It's Vallow Milk, all one word, V-A-L-O-M-I-L-K. And the idea is that it is – it's like a peanut butter cup, but instead of peanut butter, there's marshmallows. Oh, wow. I, I don't think we're going to do the segment this time. Yeah, no. No. Wow. That – it's like exploded in there. That's disgusting. We're going to have to pause it. You're going to have to wash your hands. Yeah, I think – Oh, my. Uh, Vallow milk. Really dirty. <laughs> Never oh, mind what they taste like. It's so disappointing. Uh, if you ever wanted a peanut butter cup, I would just run all over you. Fallow milk. So, sadness here on... Two Guys, One Podcast, as uh, we're unable to do a what's the other guy eating, some tragedy here in the studio. Yeah, it's not for lack of trying. The product today I don't think is packaged in the United States, so I don't think there's quality control on it. Just trying to get the package open was difficult, and then once it opened, there was just sticky goo on everything. Like, I could not eat this product. It had been contaminated. Goo. I like the I like the description and what what was really interesting to me and I didn't get a good look I didn't want to get a great look at it but you raised it now the name of the val val valo milk valo milk valo milk all one word it sounds like something out of time like it sounds like something that a housewife would have bought to settle her stomach you know in like nineteen forty six the snake oil salesman yes. cheers alls do you are you losing your hair valo milk for for a healthy rub, head of rub air rub the goo in yes <laughs> rub. Rub, rub these cups on top of your head. It it looks like a peanut butter cup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, one of the big ones, the new ones that they sell with extra chocolate in the middle or something. Yeah, like the – I think the idea was that it was a marshmallow-filled peanut butter cup. So it's a peanut butter cup, peanut butter taken out, marshmallow put in. Right. But the one that you actually – once you once you finally got the package open – I mean I guess once you're so dirty, you don't mind getting a little more dirty to see what the hell happened on the inside of this thing. Once you get the package open, you raise the cup up and it looked to me like 
like it had busted in the middle somehow, and the no, whole, no, all they the marshmallow were, they were filling. Both, no, both cups were uh, both cups were still intact. There was something else in. Yeah, the Yeah, it was like it was like they put an extra marshmallow without chocolate on it in there, and it had melted. Oh wow! On everything, uh, it's kind of gross, man. Yeah, yeah. Let's. Uh, I'll attempt it next week. Excellent, excellent. Uh, good on you for trying, though. Good on you for trying. All right, so we'll get back to what's the other guy eating uh, next week when we can find a product that won't. Well, it won't get all over the microphone. We really can't. We really can't get goo on the equipment. It's not you that I'm worried about. It's the equipment. I'm just sad that I didn't lick my fingers to see what the goo tasted like. No, I am not sad that you didn't lick your fingers. That would have been a that that would have been a terrible, terrible thing for you to do. Other guy, it's uh, time for if you could. Oh yeah, if you could. Have a world record in the Guinness Book of World Records. What would it be? Only one. Yeah, you. Yeah, you, you're you're a record holder, like the guy with the longest fingernails. Uh, so does it have to be a strange one like that, or could it be? No, it could be. I mean, it might be something useful, like, uh, like and 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 if the it's, longest the world record for the longest shot, like that would be something useful. The most. I'm trying to think of something that would that would make me. Money in some f- so so if there was a record so you wouldn't do a useless one like you wouldn't I jumped on a pogo stick a hundred thousand times that wouldn't be your record not remotely I had my window and maybe this just shows like what a sad childhood I I had I guess I don't know maybe I missed out on some of the wonder but to me my window of interest in the Guinness Book of World Records was literally about thirty minutes long I bought one at a book fair you know I don't know in like ninety four ninety five or something like that I don't know it's ten years old well. It was even earlier than that then. Like, yeah, like 91, 92. I bought one at the book fair at school, whatever the new ed- edition. And yeah, I didn't – I mean I I, skinned, I realized it was like it was like reading the dictionary. It didn't fascinate me. Really? Flipping through. Yeah. I turned to a few, the ones that come right off the top of your head, the guy with the world's longest fingernails, for instance, or the world's tallest man, the world's shortest man, the, you know, the world's fattest woman. You know, and then I'm 10, so I go to the highest video game scores, you know, and things like that. But I did you ever try to beat any? Oh no, I was never, I was never really that good like at here video I come, games. Miss Pac Man. Uh, no, I and in particular the early games like that 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 were really score based. I was never into Mario was the first thing that captured my attention, and that yeah it had a score, and you even kept there was like high score record board i think of uh, on somewhere on there that you could look at but really it was about beating the levels you know i mean you it you just completed the goal and so i i think i missed the whole high score thing and i never i was not i was never a very competitive kid i didn't play sports i didn't i was not good at very many things until i was about 13 and then i then i found out that i could really make that i could make people laugh and that people would applaud me if i said funny things and okay, but so there's, there's other records that you that you could pick like and, and maybe even enjoy like yeah like so so like you yeah. watch that you the the you've most th- this certain movie longer than than anyone else like there was that was a record that was being broke whenever I was right at, yeah. at a theater literally at a local theater uh, a guy said and I can't remember what movie it was but Snow White he watched Snow White a thousand times he watched or not, not even a thousand times it was it was an hour base like oh he has to watch this movie for one hundred and seventy two hours right yeah. Uh, fifteen minute breaks at once every, every four two, hours yeah, or whatever like for food and and bathroom. Right. Yeah. Um, so you could pick something like that. Yeah. No, I don't have any interest in that. I mean, I uh, the most Academy Awards. You know, what the most the, the most Pulitzer prizes. Oh, that's so lame. Uh, I the most the most money. <laughs> that's not a good one either. I'm, I'm sorry. Okay. Let's turn it around for a moment. We, we, we've, we've seen what a man with no imagination or, or, or goals can do with this question. What world record would you like to hold, sir? Uh, I have to narrow it down. Like I don't want a useful one. The longest domino knocked down. You know, like when you knock one domino down, it knocks all the other ones down. Yes. You know, it's like the world record. Like they've used an entire warehouse, 400,000 dominoes. Now, are you saying that you would like to – Given given the time and resources, if those were just – if somebody said, I'll co-sign on this other guy, 
you go ahead and build the world's largest domino yeah. track. You'd actually like to do it or yeah, yeah, yeah. you'd just like to have done it in the past. No, I mean how cool would it be to have the world's lo- longest domino track? Like think about this. If you mess up Not at any cool. if you mess up at any one point, like you've got 150,000 dominoes down. Yeah. You have to start all over and you have to think that's going to happen a couple times. Like that's going to happen. There's no way you're going to build a domino track and at some point not screw it up. No. Well, well, no. I mean, it's I'm, yeah. You you can do it because they do do it. I mean, somebody's built the world's largest domino. Yeah, but track. how many times did it take them to do it? A long, you know, many. I would imagine. Yeah. Like that's commitment, man. Like a chick's going to be like, that's a dude that when he sets his mind on something, he don't let anything get in the way. I like that dude. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You deny the existence of a hot McDonald's girl, and yet you just described an entire cast of women. That would be impressed by the world's largest domino track? Yeah, like if I did it, they yeah, that would that would just add to that would be another if plus. You did it. Ah, yeah. ah like if I'm another. collecting Man Scout badges, Domino World's Largest Domino Track is a Man Scout, boom, I got it. That's a Man Scout. Yeah. I no, that's not a Man Scout badge that I have any interest in. Right, that, and that's fine. I mean, if you want to have a very small Man Scout sash, <laughs> that's did cool. You just, did you just question the size of my sash? I'm just saying, if you're not a dude wanting to add to it, I, I'm trying to think of one that I would that I would actually be willing, a world record that I would be willing to chase down, that I'd be willing to commit time to. Ah, here's one I would be proud of. I don't know that I have it in me to chase it down, but here's one that I would be. Well, proud obviously, of. you don't. Or like, I'd be doing it right. Like, I, I would have already built the world's longest domino tracks. Yes, yeah. but yeah, okay, okay. If tomorrow morning, if you could. If tomorrow morning, someone can, some, someone comes to me and says, "Hey, I'll write the check for you to take the time off from work and for whatever resources you need to get ready to do this. Let's make this thing happen." Yeah, yeah. I I would I think it would be cool to have like the fastest to two million views on YouTube or something like that. You, and know, you just like a keep, viral you just video. keep doing stupid stuff or interesting stuff. Yes, or amazing stuff. And how cool would it be that the fastest way to two million views? would be the world's longest domino track. That's definitely not – I say that. People are really into these – what's the what's the name of the machine where like uh, – so like the boot swings and kicks the egg and it breaks it and that dumps down into the platter and the platter spins over with the robotic arm and drops yeah, onto the – Yeah, the, the, the Mythbusters have a show. Yeah, what are those right machines now? called? I those ha- machines are called – Something I don't. There's a name for those machines. There's a, like the guy that used to draw the cartoons. Anyway, the OK Go. There's an OK Go video where they show this gigantic process for painting a wall or something, whatever. And it some of it's dominoes, and and it, at one point it flings a frisbee into a sensor, and then like the trash can falls over, and there's a ball that rolls, and you know it's just a million things all tied together. And, and the whole time their music's playing too. They got a music video where they do this for. You've not seen this? No. I, that was a long, rambling thing to say. We should go and watch this music video now, I guess. Uh, fuck! What was my point? I got lost. We were talking about... You said you would want it, that be a world record you'd want to hold. Ah, okay. So that video was very popular. You say the longest domino track's a way to get to 2 million views. I, I, disagree. I don't think so. If something flashed across your, your news feed, it was like... New video, 12 million dominoes go down. Like you wouldn't you wouldn't click on it? No. No. 12 million dominoes employees go down. <laughs> <laughs> You'd click on that. <laughs> yeah, we both we both like to read. You like to read a lot more. I like to read the internet mostly, but I do try to read books. Uh have you made any progress in uh, you're reading a series by what's the man's name? Mark Kevin Kevin Hearn. I keep wanting to his, his, his brother Mark is a, is a friend of mine. <laughs> He's I'm super to, popular. Trying to promote him. Kevin Hearn, uh, the name of the series is the the Iron Druid Chronicles, right? Uh it turns out I think this one's gonna be a uh, it's gonna be a magic sword. It's a MacGuffin. I mean it's pretty pretty basic. Yeah. You said they use a lot of uh Gaelic names. Uh is the character the character's Irish? Yeah, yeah. The character's the character's Irish and he has like his Real Irish names, weird and long, so I'm glad they don't use it all the time. Oh, I thought for a minute his name was Weird and Long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> it's, his name is Weird, and it is a long name. <laughs> yes. yes, not Weird and Long. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I don't use it, but like for example, 
Uh, I don't know how to pronounce this. Maybe you do. So it is A big O little G. A big O little G. Yeah. Mm, G. And it's not just a a. Uh, no, it's a capital it's not O. Just a capital O. Yeah. Oh, it is a capital. Yeah, it's o. a capital O. Like it's a. I mean, maybe it's bigger than a capital. I don't know. Yeah. No. No, I don't have any. Uh, Og. Yeah, I don't know. I'd say A Og. Og. Like how hard do you hit the A? Og. And then does that O make the G? A Og. Egg. Oog. Oog. Like, like could it be Odge? Like the, the soft. Big o? Oh, does it make the G soft? Yeah. I don't know. God, we're terrible. We're both Irish. We're both of Irish descent. Nobody What's wrong cares. with us? Yeah, nobody cares. Uh, at least of all us. Okay, so it's a, it's kind of a simple plot line, but I mean, are you enjoying it? Yeah, I think I kind of like um, like we've talked about this before, kind of with with superheroes. Like I, you know, I'm I'm down with a comic book, you know, reading a superhero. Uh, I'm not so much down with like superhumans, right? Like I want my I want my characters to be relatable. You like Batman and Green Hornet, not super Superman and uh, Spider Man. Yeah, so yeah, not right. Iron Man, he's okay, you're okay with. Yeah, because you know he built just a suit. suit. Yeah, it's just technology used. He's there. just real smart. Yeah, so that's that's cool. I mean, he's still a still a dude. Right. And so I think I like uh, like whenever I'm reading, you know, fantasy type books like this. Like I need it to be grounded, or I just I just lose it. The first one is you're reading Hounded. Yeah, I'm. All right. I mean, do you think at this point oh, you're likely to go it. straight into the second one? Yeah, I'm going to finish reading it because, uh, I mean, it's a first – I mean, there's more books to come. So in the first one's – Obviously, it will amp up by the time. Yeah. The climax of the first one is generally pretty good to pull you into that second one. Right. But the beginning of the first one's generally always, always slow because you have so many different things to set up. I, I'm so sick of origin stories. I'm so sick of origin stories. I – especially in – especially now in the comic book world. I, we mentioned Avengers earlier. Like – I, that's the one thing that I really hope happens from now on. Let's cut out the origin bullshit. We know exactly who Daredevil is. And if you don't, do it in two and a half minutes in the credit sequence. You know what I mean? Do it like yeah, the like Incredible we know, Hulk did. But here's the thing is we know who Daredevil is, right? But you're not – unless people know like an origin story or, or something about Yeah, but the second them. movie always makes more money. The second movie always makes more money. It's not just because – Lots of people found the first one on DVD. Some of that is is the case, yes, but m- mostly it's because the second one's a better fucking movie. It's a real story. Like the Avengers, they set it up right. Like you got to see the Thor movie, you got to see the Hulk movie, you got to see all these characters. Basically. Yeah, but we we got no backstory for uh, Hawkeye. We didn't need it, and we and we got very. Because it's not little... that interesting. <laughs> Like hey, Hawkeye's not the guy gonna, who Hawk... likes the non superheroes, right? But he's not going to make a movie. They're not going to make a Hawkeye movie by himself. Hold on. What do you need to know about Hawkeye? Like he's he's an assassin who likes to use a bow and arrow. Like there's not. Well, but who trained him? But if you see a why giant, why is he so? If you see accurate, a giant green thing, so you're like, fearless? oh, where did that come from? I and I'm saying, right? But there's people like that, like like army snipers. That, that's basically they go through all the training, and everything. So I can wrap my head around that. Like some guy who just turns big and green. Well, I need to know what, okay. like, how did that happen? Okay, but in a world where a guy turns big and green, and there's another guy who seems to be the the god of thunder, and another guy who is a super soldier, and another guy who has this technologically advanced iron suit, why is he the one sniper that gets to stand beside them? That's what I'm saying. Well, it's always got a world of snipers. Like, get, like one of, somebody's going to be the best. Oh. So you're saying we just don't like know the guy's get, name because they don't he doesn't he doesn't wear a yeah, costume like, in our real world. Yeah, we're not, oh let's put together a team, we need a sniper. Uh let's get the fourteenth best sniper, that'll work. Like that <laughs> <laughs> All right, fair enough. Uh so Kevin Hearns, uh Iron Druid Chronicles, uh lots of Gaelic words, uh, but uh, so far so good. We'll get an update from you. Uh, on that, uh, I hope something finish. interesting happens so then I can. Cause I right know. I, I want to hear happened. you talk about it. I, I do have something to talk about bookwise, though. I, I mentioned last week I'm reading American Gods by Neil Gaiman, and, and there's this great idea. Uh, so, for those who haven't read it, and I strongly suggest you go read it, although it's not, I don't, I don't love the book. It's not like my favorite book ever, but it is a very good book, and people who are literate should try it sometime when, you, when you're looking for something different. The whole point of it is that uh, everything that has been worshipped ever is brought into existence by the worship. Thor and Odin exist because someone called... So you're saying the Beatles never die in this in this world? Maybe not that precisely, but there is a god of rock and roll, and he's real. And what happens sometimes is like a new worship is grafted on to an older uh, deity. If the, if the deity's crafty So maybe in smart, the 60s he looked like Jimi Hendrix, and in the early 90s he looked like Kurt Cobain? Maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe he changes form over time. Or more, or more probably he has... 
some suck. some generic and perfect form that is rock and roll always. You know what I mean? That is in the inherent spirit of rock and roll. And when that thing is gone, he would fade away. How horrible would it be if if that's how it worked for us? Like you looked like exactly what people thought, thought of you. Of you. So oh, when he did, wow. so when you he did something change. bad, like you look like a like a haggard old man with on on the flip side, with wouldn't jaundice. it be on the flip side? Wouldn't it be the ultimate democracy? Because as more everybody people, would try to do good to look good, and, and but not only that, as more people believed in you or appreciated or respected you, you would literally grow in power. Charismatic individuals would literally be stronger than non-charismatic individuals. Yeah, but charismatic doesn't necessarily mean good. Uh, no. That's one of the interesting concepts they raised. The other, the other thing, though, is the idea that there are locations of power in the world. Uh, there are some spots that are just special. They are uh, vertexes or whatever of 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 uh, like Stonehenge. Yeah. Yes. For instance, and and Stonehenge is referenced in the old world. Those things were were always you. You put a great big rock there. And you'd build a you know a temple, or or you'd build an altar there, or you'd build Stonehenge where this energy existed. In the New World, we had thrown away all the old mythologies before before we got here and began building the civilization. Really, so we didn't do that. Occasionally, there is a church built on one of those, like maybe a Christian church or a synagogue or something like built on lucky. one of those places. Yeah, or, or the right guy found there first. But most of them, it's just somebody that got driven crazy by the energy that they felt and the draw they felt to go there. And so, roadside attractions are the places of power in North America. If you want to go to the world's largest skillet. The reason why people are drawn there over and over and over again is because it is a location of, of supernatural uh, forces. Yeah, no, I think I would just go see the world's largest skillet. Just to see the world's largest skillet? Yeah, and I have before. I've, like Anytime you're traveling, you see like the world's largest, I always stop. Now, but American Gods presupposes the reason is because you were drawn to it by the energy that emanates from that location, as was the guy who first decided to cast iron the world's largest skillet. And so is the world's largest ball of yarn, and and uh, what's the place in Austin? Uh, the the junk museum or something like that? The junk the cathedral of junk, the, something like that. I don't know. There's a whole house built in this guy's backyard. Uh, it's a tremendous structure, and it's all it's just welded together trash. It's amazing. I like the guy who made the uh, the coral castle. Yes, yes, exactly. Why did that guy do it? Because he um, wanted to be in the Guinness Book of World Records. That's why he did it. <laughs> yes. Yeah, but <laughs> that's, that's why anybody does anything. Nice. You've seen Close Encounters of the Third Kind? Yeah. Okay. So, you know, he's he sees the rock formation in his mind. He dreams about it. He builds it in his mashed potatoes. He, he, he finally finds a photo of it, and then he has to go there, right? That the the flat rock or whatever that that where the mm-hmm. where the climax takes place. Spoiler for a forty year old movie. <laughs> Gaiman is is saying that that those spots of energy would do that to you. They just take over your life. Somebody somebody that's a little receptive to it for whatever reason feels the energy a little stronger than those around him. He'd just be captivated by it. Couldn't sleep at night. Couldn't do without it. Couldn't stop thinking about it. Would have to do this thing. And then so he then builds like- this monument to it. And because of that. Other people are drawn to it too, which then cycles back and feeds the energy. So, so like, these American these American gods, these these modern deities floating around without their worshippers largely, go to these places to soak up some of the ambient power. That's the idea. So like Guinness Book World Records is like their their phone book. Yeah, or or uh, like I want to order I want to order Domino's. What's the number? Yes. Uh, now I got to go see the world's largest ball of yarn. Yes. Like yeah, it's yeah, as yeah. tasty as I thought it was going to be. Domino's. I was just fascinated by that idea. I, I also really like the way that Gaiman ties together. He begins to give North America and the United States like a little mythology, and he does it. He just does because it by we're the people, are, because we we have the most time to waste to cast the large iron, largest iron skillet. That's just a symbol of our I mean, prosperity. It, you said, yeah. Like if you did it in Russia, you'd be like, no, that dude's searching for some bread. <laughs> like he's not doing that. Yeah. What's the world? What's the American dream? It's the world's largest <laughs> skillet in every backyard. <laughs> nice. I like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it. I'm, I'm going to finish that this week. The one that I'm – Sex, Drugs, and Cocoa Puffs I think is the one that I'm reading. It's, an, it's an, a collection of essays. That's the one that I – that's next up on my list. Just, Chuck Klosterman with the fancy name. I mean I think if you 
entitle a book Sex, Drugs. I mean, it doesn't really matter what the third one is. People will read it. Yes, there are lots of books that start Sex, Drugs, Sex, comma, Drugs, comma, and a third thing. But uh, as a matter of fact, that's not a bad name for a book, Sex, Drugs, and a Third Thing. <laughs> um, but I think it's very important what the third thing is. That's going to determine what your audience is, right? He wants fat kids to read about no, sex and drugs. No, he wants – it's 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 ironic. It's it's not – Not to the fat kid. He's just pissed <laughs> off at the end of the story. Sex, drugs, and Cocoa Puffs. There were very little Cocoa Puffs in this book, <laughs> Mr. Cl- Dear Mr. Klosterman. I'm upset. I am very upset by the lack of Cocoa Puffs in this book. <laughs> I'm going to send a dirty picture to the Birdman and see if he'll feed me. Yeah, like that's the type of person that reads a book entitled Sex, Drugs, and Cocoa Puffs. Fat kids? Well, no, just crazy people who send – Send letters yeah. to Chuck Klosterman. Uh, I'm going to send a letter. I'm not going to send a letter to Chuck Klosterman. I might tweet him. He's on the Twitter. Why? I mean – I To tell him how much I like his book if I do. I do a, that. What a waste of his time. He doesn't have to read it. It's it's for me. You don't ever say thank you to, uh, to a content provider? Like – to an artist. Like, thanks, Coca-Cola. That was delicious. I think when when a corporation or a person does something, you should pat them on the back. Yeah, when they've done when they've done something good, worthwhile. If the book is good, occasionally- look, if I had, look, if I had the time to think every product person that makes me happy, I would have enough time to build the world's largest domino track, and that's what I would do. No time. No time at all, says the man who's just recorded his second episode of a podcast, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, because that's where the priority is, like- Oh, I'm your priority? No, I'm not your priority. This is your priority. Like you're saying, the, you're saying the show is worth putting on the thing, putting on the putting on the the schedule, as the old guy from Jurassic Park says. Yeah, or maybe I just really don't want to build the largest domino track because I keep putting stuff in front of it, so I never get to it on my list. Yeah. Like it's on the list. Yeah, let's do that podcast. So I don't have to do that domino <laughs> thing yet. <laughs> Excellent. Well, uh, that about wraps things up. A big thank you for this week's intro and outro music. It's uh, from the lovely ladies of The Mustache is Sentient. You can find them on Facebook, facebook.com slash The Mustache is Sentient. And uh, you will not regret checking them out. Uh, there will be links for that as well. You can find us online at twoguysonepod.tumblr.com. Send us an email, twoguysonepod at me.com. That's the email address. Follow me on Twitter at the Drunken Rogue. Or uh, follow me on Tumblr, too. Uh, you can do that at aroguesLife.tumblr.com. You can find the other guy right here next week. That's about the only place you can find him. Did I do all the internet things? I did. Yeah, I did all the internet things. Okay. I'm one guy. And I'm the other. And this has been the podcast.